What's up guys, it's Living Survival, and today I've got another viewer request, the Hazard 4 EVAC Plan B. So stick with me. So I want to say thanks to everybody that's went over to WorldWideSurvival.com and became a member and entered to win in the Bug Out Bag giveaway. If this is the first time you're hearing about that, go back a couple videos and you have now until the end of the month to become a member, create a new topic, and of course subscribe to my channel and you are entered to win a bug out bag. So thanks again to everybody that has signed up. I think we've had 100 new members or so sign up, so that's awesome. A lot of good discussion going on over there. And actually this pack I traded with another member on the trading post over there. So if you guys are looking to trade up some gear, definitely go check out WorldWideSurvival.com, become a member and check out the trading post over there. The site is completely free. I don't charge a thing to become a member. So please share your videos. You know, it's a good way to increase your views and increase your subs. Believe it or not, I do pay for a lot of the gear that I review. Not everything is sent to me free by the companies that I review gear for. And of course it does cost money to maintain a website, hosting and things like that. So if you guys do want to support uh, the website and support my channel, you can definitely do so by shopping on my Amazon store. The link is always below on every one of my videos. That'll take you there. I've organized the categories and the products, things that I recommend uh, for survival. You don't pay anything more to shop on my Amazon store. I've simply organized some products and some categories into one portal for you guys to check out some of the things that I recommend gear I recommend and things like that there's also if you go to the about page on my youtube channel there's a link that says support this channel you can definitely support my channel by clicking on that link as well all right then of course give you guys a look at the shoulder strap here very comfortable shoulder strap it does have the air mesh in the back so it's very comfortable it's got some webbing and loop options here two d-rings on the side of course to to uh, connect the uh, the additional strap that you can connect you don't have to wear the strap if you don't want to uh, this buckle is real high quality. It's got a lock on it, which is kind of nice when it's in the locked position It won't unbuckle so somebody can't run up behind you and you know unbuckle your bag and take off with it It is a fairly fairly loose uh, Button I've seen that on a couple other reviews of this pack that they said this button was very loose Although it is loose. It's not going to slide down unless of course your your arm or something or a branch or, or something like that uh, actually moves it down uh, but the down is the locked position, which is nice. So you'd actually have to, you know, flick it up for it to come unlocked. So I don't really see that as being a big problem. And it is sort of a nice feature to make sure that your pack stays securely on you. It has a large oversized D-ring here for connecting some other things if you wanted to do that. And then it's also got the, uh, the webbing, the Velcro wrap here, which keeps it really nice. Keeps all your webbing and straps out of the way if i'm going to wear a pack especially a uh, sling pack you know i want all that webbing to be nicely organized so that it's not flopping all around my body and you can see that it hugs my body really well and it is very comfortable to wear then of course to uh, sling this pack around you just undo the strap there and then you can slide it right around and that gives you quick and easy access to everything in your pack it's right up front here and again all the pockets are oriented so that you can use them either way you can uh, the zips go all the way around so that you can have the zippers on this side if this is the side that you're carrying on for getting into there, getting into there, and then also getting into your main compartment. If you're wearing it on the other side, you could just put the zips on the other side and that would give you easy access on that side as well. All right, so taking a closer look at this pack, it is 1000D Cordura, so it is going to be very durable. It is also polyurethane coated, so it's going to be weather resistant, not waterproof. This is 17.7 liters, and of course it is a sling pack, so you wear it over either shoulder. It is ambidextrous. Now, when I traded with Cameron on the forums, I also did get this 1000D Cordura flip-top bottle holder from Hazard 4. So all I have in it right now is a Nalgene bottle. It's got this quick cinch on the top that you could cinch a Nalgene bottle. You could also put other utensils in there. It does have a couple rows of molly. Maybe you want to hook like a Leatherman or something. You could hook this onto your belt and make a little survival kit out of this as well. It does have a front pocket in it for things like a small water filter or some purification tablets. And it does have molly on the back so that you could connect it onto the pack and either the front here or onto the side. So I'll probably do that as well. So taking a look at the front here, you've got this upper pocket here. Again, the zippers go all the way around to both sides. 
so that no matter which side you're wearing it on of your body, you'll be able to access the zips that way. We've got another pouch down here with some organization inside. We'll take a look at that. On the sides here, you do have two compression straps, which have the Velcro uh, keepers here, which is nice. It keeps all that webbing from dangling all over the place. As you can see, there's not any webbing that dangles, which is really cool. On both sides, it does have a pocket. And again, what's nice about that pocket is that you can hold things like I have this BK9 in here. If you were to actually just put this on the outside and clip it in, you run the risk of it slipping through as you're moving and falling out. But with these pockets on the side, it can't do that. Now, with this as full as I have it, uh, you could probably only fit like a 24 ounce bottle in here. Uh, I don't think you could fit a 32 ounce bottle, but it is a quite a deep pocket, so that is nice. It's got molly all the way down the sides little hazard four tag there and then on the other side it's exactly the same with molly all the way down and then a pocket here on the back you have a thermo molded foam padding which is really comfortable it's got their logo uh, molded in there which is really cool then of course you've got the shoulder strap it is a nice padded shoulder strap with the air mesh on the back it is really comfortable to wear up top you have a couple little um, webbing options i just have a web dominator added there and then down a little further, you have some more different sized webbing options. I just have a folding knife slip to the, through there. And then of course you have the belt that I showed you earlier. That is a high quality belt with the locking system on it. And then a high quality D-ring at the bottom here for hooking more things in. At the bottom of both these straps here, you do have metal rings. And of course, if you wanted to flop this to the other side, you would just unweave these and flip flop them. On the actual uh, retention clip here that you can either choose to wear or not wear, it does have the clip that hooks into the D-ring on the sling and then also does have a quick release buckle as well. Up top there is a nice high quality and double stitched and cross stitched uh, gra grab handle or drag handle, so that's nice. And then it does have an adjustment here to bring the pack closer or further to the sling itself. You just adjust that for comfort as needed. And then there is a little, about a two or two and a half inch zip hole here for things like an antenna. If you wanted to use this as a radio bag, you could stick the antenna out here while you're on the move. And then it also has a back section here, which can hold a hydration bladder. It's got hook and loop on the back here so that you could hook in like a holster and carry your concealed there. And then the tube can go right out the little zipper hole there. And you also have a loop here to hold your bladder in place. On the bottom you do have another high quality grab handle so you do have handles on both sides of the pack. And then you have some more high quality webbing that you could use to attach something to the bottom of the pack or just to compress the pack further if you have less gear in it. I did go ahead and I replaced all the poles with these black paracord poles. I think it gives it a nice look. And it is a nice looking bag. The size is really nice, again, so that you could slip in things like a pickup truck, the, the bench seat. You know, you can slide this under there and uh, keep it out of view of passersby that may want to break in and grab your bag if they see a tactical looking bag like this. So looking at what we got in here, let's look at the top uh, pouch here. It does have a hook and loop section for some morale patches. There is no extra pockets or zips or anything. It's just simply a pocket. I just have a hand warmer. I have a couple of wet fires here to make fire, some live fire, a compass, a lighter, and a signal whistle. So just a simple pocket there. There's nothing, nothing really else to that top pocket. Then in the next pocket down, you do have several rolls of molly here, kind of a utility pocket here. I don't have anything in the front of the pocket here. I do have a headlamp, some uh, duct tape or Gorilla tape, uh, some bungees, and then it does have a, a couple of organization options here. It does have some pen holders, however the pen holders aren't quite big enough to hold a full size pen or pencil. So that would have been nice if they'd have went maybe below this pocket or something so that you could get a little bit deeper stuff in there. Right now you could use like a Fisher Space Pen or something like that, but you can't fit full size pens into those little uh, holders there. 
In the middle, middle one here, I just have a Leatherman, and then I have a Phoenix PD22UE uh, LED flashlight on this other side. And then it has this little dual Velcro flap section here. The reason it's dual is, of course, if you're wearing it this side, you can get it that way, and if you're wearing it from the other side, you can get it the other way. I just have a right in the rain pad in there. So that's really all I keep in the front section. Going into the main section here, we can take these compression straps off both sides. And again, the zips go all the way around to both sides, making it so that you can only open it halfway if you're using it as a sling pack. Or if you take it all the way off, you can, of course, zip it all the way open, just like that. So on the back side here, they do have a little see-through zippered pocket here. Uh, I just have a couple medical related items in there. I've just got a small medical kit, um, some clotting gauze, some uh, aqua tabs, some moleskin, and then a container to purify water in. Then in the main compartment here, you do have this foam divider, which you can you can move anywhere in the pack. Both sides of the inside here are hook and loop so that you can uh, move this divider you know, pretty much anywhere in the inside of the pack. And I just have some mechanics gloves in here, a life straw, a couple of glow sticks, a uh, slingshot, a poncho which can also be used as a shelter, jet foil and the gas is in the jet foil. Got my solar panel which I can use to charge up these batteries or charge directly to a device. Some contractor grade trash bags and then in the bottom here you have a little uh, elastic uh, pocket here with the see-through. I just have some N95 masks and a map. Then on up into this front section here I just have some slingshot ammo and I have a GPS in my bow foam radio. So again you can take this foam uh, divider all the way out or you can move it pretty much anywhere on the inside of the pack there to divide it up however you want. So you can still get a lot of things into this pack even though it's a 17 liter pack and it is quite narrow. Definitely good like I said for people with like bench seats and things like that that you can slip it in and have it be rather inconspicuous. It is really comfortable to wear on the body and it has a pretty good mix of uh, you know not having a lot of accessory little storage compartments and things but it still does have the main uh, storage compartments for things like a flashlight and a Leatherman and things like that. I'll probably add a few more pouches and things like that to keep things like my fire kit and everything like that a little bit more separated and a little bit more organized but uh, but definitely pretty nice the way the zips go all the way around for all the pockets that you have easy access no matter which side that you wear it on which shoulder that you wear it on. So I think all in all, this is a really well-made pack and it definitely would fit that niche for somebody that's looking for a lower profile and more narrow pack like this. It'd be a good option to take a look at the EVAC Plan B. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this review today of the EVAC Plan B by Hazard 4. Great company, great product. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of sling packs, but I know I've brought you guys a couple sling packs in the past, and this is definitely a cool sling pack, especially since it's narrow enough to maneuver through the woods and things like that without getting hung up, and also narrow enough to stick in the back of your seat, under your seat, in things like a pickup truck or an SUV, making it great for a get-home bag that won't get noticed by people walking by. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you leave me some comments below. And as always, guys, subscribe for more videos.